Hi everyone, I'm Naina Jain from Linux Technology Center, IBM. And today I'm going to talk about Power VM Platform TSO, securing Linux credentials locally. Uh, this is a disclaimer, which I'll flash for a few seconds and I'll just read it as it is. This work represents the view of the authors and does not re necessarily represent the view of IBM. All design points disclosed herein are subject to finalization and upstream acceptance. The features described may not ultimately exist or take the described form in a product. IBM to IBM logo and power system are trademarks of IBM Corporation registered in many jurisdictions worldwide. Linux is the registered trademark of Linux Torvalds in the US and other countries. And other company product and service names may be trademarks or service marks of others. Okay, so let's get it started. So as I said, I'm working in Linux Technology Center and I work in Linux security team and we work in on enabling various security features on the Linux on power. And uh, currently uh, the thing which we are trying is to make use of uh, platform Kiso, which is a secure storage provided by the firmware and uh, which can be used for storing various security variables for the like asymmetric keys and symmetric keys, which are then used by various security features across the firmware stack. So my original problem was exposed security variables stored in platform key store to user space for key management. And now I will take you through that how my, how my problem got slightly twisted and then Finally, how did we make our way into the solution? So uh, I have worked on Secure Boot Early for Open Power and we had the similar requirement there and then uh, of exposing the variables to the user space and we had used the SysFS storage. And that time we have also studied that, okay, the, there are EFI variables and then they also get exposed by SysFS and then they move to the file system interface. So mostly it is like, it is either the SysFS interface which gets used or there might be specific cases for file system interface. So I just followed the uh, approach and I created the driver for the platform key store and I exposed the variables via SysFS interface and I posted the first version of my patches in January, 2022. And then I got the feedback from the upstream. And uh, this one was uh, from Greg Cage who mentioned that this is like the third or fourth different platform specific proposal. And the second main thing was that to give up on platform specific user or kernel APIs on this random CSFS or security FS files scattered around the tree and come up with a standard place for all of this. So, First thing which I didn't understand here was about third or four different platform specific proposal because yes, there had been few, but I was unsure which three or four we are talking about here. And then we also got copied onto the another patch series, which was in discussion in parallel in the mailing list. This was related to confidential computing patches and it meant for uh, using security FS to read or delete secrets for VM encryption. And uh, Greg H had given a similar comment there, uh, referring to our patch series, which said, you all need to work together to come up with a unified place for this and stop making it platform specific. And at that point, my problem statement slightly got modified too. Exposed security variables stored in platform key store to use a space for key management using a unified interface. Okay, so we are getting into the maze now. And the first question came up is unify what? Interfaces, code, or both? And so I spent some time uh, looking around and then thinking uh, we have two interfaces. Um, current mainly, I mean, or that is what mainly I'll discuss for now. There might be more in kernel, but the context is security here. So one is SysFS, which is uh, uh, the Sys firmware, and uh, uh, another security FS, which is uh, like underlying SysFS, but Sys kernel security. 
And, uh, and the point here is the sys firmware is mainly used for showing attributes and objects of platform specific firmware within the subdirectories inside the sys firmware directory. And the uh, security FS is a pseudo file system and used for kernel security subsystems. In case of the uh, code which is used to expose uh, the objects onto the firmware, it is uh, the driver code often have to interact with firmware. And then the, uh, the, ex the exposed uh, features are categorized by device or firmware features. And in case of the security features which gets exposed by security FS, the driver code does not interact with firmware. In fact, mainly it is for kernel security features. It's like, uh, TPM, IMA, lockdown for those. And this firmware, as I said, it is mainly for the firmware. And the thing which we notice is that mainly currently EFI variables and open power secure variables, which are used for firmware secure features, they are both exposed via SysFS. Even the EFI verifies, which is used by EFI variables, is mounted on onto the sys firmware mount path only. And there might be probably some other platforms as well, but these are the two mainly which I have looked at. So here I'm not saying one is better than the other or like that. What I'm saying is they are just for two different purposes. And now if we observe the kernel code structure, Okay, we all know that, okay, there are different directories and each of them have its own purpose, like FS is for storing file system code, ARC is for platform specific code, there's word and drivers word. I do not know much about them, but I got to, uh, to look at them because of Cocoa Patches and it seems they are for virtualization. And I do not understand the exact difference between the two, uh, the two directories, but yes, they both seem to be for virtualization. So some of the observations I have from here are, if I were FS is ARC specific, but it is part of file system. I'm not sure why. The security FS is a generic file system for Linux kernel security modules, but is part of security and not of FS. Um, here probably the reason was because it was meant only for security modules and we have all modules, uh, security subsystems into the uh, security directory. So probably that, but again, I'm not, uh, very sure. Then what sounds like to have a virtualization code, but KVM is part of this, well, Zen is part of drivers. Again, I'm not sure. And how drivers or what is different from what, as I already said, I don't know the difference. So I feel there is already some mismatch here and there in the kernel code. And then there is a third thing, which is there are different environments and they differ not only uh, syntactically, but also semantically. So let's see. Uh, let's consider the platforms like EFI, Open Power, uh, Power VM platform keystores will be the new one, and then the Coco. And they have a different uh, requirement for the users. Some of them want to allow read, write, create, and delete of the files but some of them want to only do the read and uh, remove like Coco. And there might be others which only do the read write like open power. Authenticated and unauthenticated variables. Uh, it does allow live updates. The, however, it has its own uh, concept of policies and the consumers I, uh, already existing code. But one of the comment we, we received from Matthew Garrett was that these are semantically different and if we uh, tried to use that for non-EFI platforms, it can become confusing for user and it is also maintain, difficult to maintain the consistency of, over the time and which we fully agree with. And so, yeah, we, we had done our own inter platform specific CSFS interface for open power then. So EFI variables, open power are already in upstream and Cocoa code was recently upstreamed and power via platform keys. So, code is what we are trying to upstream now. So what do we do next now? And then uh, there was thought that 
don't we need something similar to sys kernel security for formula security features and in the similar lines like security fs should we develop a similar file system for firmware security features? And that is where uh, uh, I want to propose a new firmware security file system called firmware security FS. Uh, the two parts here. First is at the code level, uh, the proposal is to introduce a generic a uh, layer of uh, firmware security FS, which provides APIs, which can be used by platform specific code to implement or support file system or inode operations based on their requirements. And in the platform specific code itself, they can handle the underlying semantics requirements or the semantics implementation. So we are talking here two layers of the code. And then for the user space, we define a well-known mount point, which would be sys firmware security. And this would be, so it looks similar to security FS, with the difference is what is its purpose. And it is mainly for firmware security features exposed onto the part of sys firmware. So how do we differentiate the security FS with uh, firmware security FS? The security FS is, uh, exposed by a sys kernel part, while the firmware security FS is exposed by a sys firmware part. The main purpose of security features is for Linux kernel security features, which do not have to interact with firmware. The changes are used by Linux kernel at runtime and are not persisted. Uh, for the firmware security FS, it is to support firmware security feature features. Kernel access mediator between user space and firmware. Objects are managed by firmware persistent and then accessed across firmware step. Uh, the, the, the reason the security FS came into was so that all LSMs can use this instead of creating their own. And exactly that is the problem that we are trying to solve for the platforms. And now that is the reason I'm saying for firmware security FS so that all platforms can use this instead of creating their own. Uh, both of these uh, file systems uh, allows callers to define their own inode or file operations. Uh, and uh, security FS may not have more need of letting users to create because they do not get persist, but firmware security FS does have a need to let users to create their own files uh, where they want, where the, the, the platform specific requirements might want to get them persistent onto the secure storage. Security FS may not have to deal with complex firmware semantics, while firmware security FS may have to deal. One of the questions which people might ask is, if they are so much similar with only a few difference for kernel and firmware, should they be, should it be, should security FS be extended? Uh, well, uh, sys kernel and sys firmware are meant for kernel and firmware features respectively. And so we would prefer to expose firmware managed objects in sys firmware because that is the key differentiation here. Uh, so after coming up with this point of the generic firmware security file system, now I will tell you how we are trying to use it for our platform specific requirements. Uh, first, I'll give a brief overview of platform key store, which is a local small protected key store managed by Power VM accessed by HCOS. It is an instance available for each LPAR. So each LPAR has their own instance of platform key store and uh, where they can keep and store their objects. Data is encrypted with unique key for each VM and is stored in SP flash. Uh, it supports uh, for uh, active and inactive live partition mobility. And there is a redundant copy encrypted and stored on hardware management console for any hardware failure in remote visa. Uh, I do want to thank Joel Wolfred from IBM firmware team who shared his, this slide and who is mainly the owner for this work also of the, the platform key store for the firmware. 
And this is the use case for which we want to expose the variables uh, using uh, the sys from a security part and with the generic files uh, uh, from a security file system. So I'll give a brief one to the Power BM guest secure boot flow here. And so this is, uh, we have the hardware system and which is a stack of host boot and hypervisor, which, which makes a part of the firmware. And that is the root of trust. And this is also uh, firmware secure boot supported. So there's always the firmware secure boot enabled here and all are verified. So this forms the root of trust for all the guests. Uh, each guest has its own stack where the first layer is partitioned firmware, PFW, which uh, loads grub and then grub loads kernel. The partition firmware is verified by, by hypervisor, which verifies grub and then verifies the kernel. Now, when we are talking about verification, for sure we need the keys. And where do we keep these keys? So these are the keys which gets stored onto the platform keys. So as I said, each guest has its own instance of platform keys. So, so yes, those keys are uh, separate for each of the guests. Uh, the kernel provides an interface for exposing these, ob these uh, key, uh, keys uh, or key objects on stored in PKs to the user space so that user can modify these keys as required. For example, in case of key rotations or if uh, or if the, the signing keys or the grab signing keys are leaked, they need to be updated. And some of them, because of the vulnerability, there might have to be the revocation of the kernel binaries or the grub binaries. And so all those which gets stored in PKs might have to be updated dynamically. And that interface is what kernel is trying to provide. The kernel talks to the uh, PKs via hypervisor with the use of H call, which is called hypervisor call. The grub and PFW are mainly the user of these keys, and they also use the H call or the OF client interface and uh, request the keys from hypervisor and for the, from the PKS. So now we understand uh, what we are trying to expose, where are we trying to use these keys, uh, Next, I would give a brief of uh, the, the various objects which we are uh, storing or maintaining in platform key store for the purpose of secure boot. And we call them authenticated variables. And that is because these variables are signature verified before they are updated. Uh, we have pl uh, platform key and KK key which is mainly used by Power VM to authenticate updates to other variables. Then there is DB key, which is for kernel verification key and grub DB, which is for grub verification key. So the, um, yeah, uh, we are sep keeping the grub keys separate from kernel keys that way if uh, there's a leak or uh, a leak get exposed because of the losing grub private key or anything uh, that doesn't expose the kernels or that doesn't get wrongly used by the exploiter. So yeah, we, we, we prefer to maintain the grub keys and the kernel signing keys separately. Then sim similarly, there's a DBX and ASBET, which is for the revocation list and DBX is for kernel and SBET is for revocation list of grub. Um, there is a discussion to use SBET for kernel also. However, it's uh, still in discussion and here we are considering that and which might be placed DBX overall. So yes, that is in consideration. And uh, we are also proposing two more variables, uh, which is a trusted CA and module DB. These are mainly used by kernel and for third-party module verification keys. The trusted CA stores the CA certificates, which is used for signing code signing keys for the modules. And the module DB will store the code signing keys, which is used for signing the third-party keys. And these are like CA keys are loaded in machine keying, and then the 
quote sign kiza loaded in secondary keying and this is as per uh, the current uh, work going on into the kernel memory list uh, i would like to emphasize here that par vm variables may sound from the names and all like efi variables but these are not efi variables and apart from this uh, main use case which we are trying to satisfy now the platform keystore can have other use cases it might be used for storing symmetry keys for like boot device encryption self encrypting drives or for like unlocking required logical val volumes without requiring a passphrase or for other public key and certificate protection and they may have their own interface for user or they may use the file system interface okay so after having a brief on to the what is uh, where and why we are having this requirement of exposing user variables and what is pk is uh, let's look at the design uh, so the first layer is the driver support which is very much arc specific code which is required to interface to firmware that does the edge calls for talking to the pks then there is a generic firmware security file system layer this will be used by by platform specific code to expose its variables the firmware security fs uh, it defines arc firmware security unit function which can be used by platforms to implement their own for filling the super block and then the third is for exposing our secure variables so power pc specific code to expose variables uh, using fs from the security fs uh, apis and here we implement arc from the security unit function which again goes into the arc specific code uh, the file operations and the inode operations uh, together we support is read write create this is how the interface would look like uh, well for now i'm mounting from the security fs and this is how it can be but uh, it can also be done similar to what security fs gets done uh, by having it part of system d or the other options uh, yes it gets mounted on sys firmware security the sequels is what created by platform specific code and and uh, the variables uh, an example of the list of variables i'm showing here and how you can write to it and then that we do not allow remove and only root is allowed to do the read write so you can see how we have gone through this maze and we have come up with this solution which solves our problem while including community feedback for unified part for users so i would come back to this question that does this satisfy unification requirements for new firmware features well we do think yes and we have now come up with a common interface which can be seen for kernel security features as sys kernel security and the firmware security features as sys firmware security. We also have done um, uh, come up with a generic code, which so that there is not need of platform specific file systems or sysfs code. They can use firmware security FS as generic interface to expose variables. Yes, they they can define their own inode and file operations. Uh, based on their requirements and their underlying semantics and it can be used by virtualized and non-virtualized firmware uh, and uh, they are not to be differentiated and uh, existing features may or may not use it however uh, the main intention for this is for new interfaces so that we do not continue the scattering of the files which was the original requirement from the grid gauge and so what are we unifying we are unifying both we have unified the interface and we are also unifying part of the code by providing the generic file system apis i do want to thank my ibm team where we had a lot of discussions and inputs for the requirements and design of platform keystore and its interface i also want to thank alan palmer george wilson and mimi zohar for uh, providing reviews and inputs onto my presentation. And I want to thank Linux kernel community for their review. 
I request people to give their feedback on my patch set and also on this proposal. And I hope this is an acceptable one. Thank you. Okay, questions.